Welcome to A Well Cared For Human, the podcast that tries to convince you that you are 100% normal and an even better than okay example of the human species, despite the fact that sometimes we feel like the craziest, most incapable, or worthless creatures on the face of this planet. I'm Corey, an author, a creative, and the host of the show. Whatever you're bringing to the table today, I hope this episode proves to be a dose of inspiration for you on your quest to become a well-cared-for human. You can find the episode show notes, your free wellness blueprint, and more at awellcaredforhuman.com. And as always, thank you for listening. Hello humans, it's your host Corey, and today we're going to talk about how to take care of yourself during the holidays. The holidays have been very difficult for many of us, either because we have challenging family dynamics or situations and because there's so much pressure, we are required to demonstrate our love commercially to everyone we have ever met, and things have to be perfect no matter what. So no matter if it's the messaging or it's your situation or your family history, whatever the trigger is, whatever difficult emotions and stress tend to come up for you during this time of the month from the middle of November through the end of the year, I just wanted to offer you some options and to talk to you about how I look after myself during this super stressful time. My history with the holidays is somewhat complicated. On one hand, my parents did a very good job of making sure I had good Christmases. They both really tried to decorate, to give me the gifts and things that I asked for, to take care of me, to make me feel taken care of, to have good meals and so on and so forth. My father often talked about how he, as a child, he was raised as a Jehovah Witness, and so he wasn't allowed to have presents, he wasn't allowed to have gifts. You know, so he'd be telling me the story as he's giving me my Christmas gifts. He'd be like, you know, when I was a kid, I couldn't have a gift. He did try to be very demonstrative in his love. I think it was an opportunity for him to show how far he had come in life, how well he had done for himself, and so he did really lean into the holiday he He enjoyed many aspects of it. And then for my mom, it was clear that she felt a lot of pressure. She didn't have a lot of money. She would still try to give me the things I asked for, even if money was really tight for her. And so they both really made efforts in that way to try to have good Christmases with me in particular. On the other hand, sometimes the holidays were really difficult because they highlighted the ways my family was a broken family, why my family wasn't perfect. For example, I remember very clearly one time when I was 15 or 16, my mother had been arrested for a DUI. I think it was her third or fourth one at the time. And her DUI conviction meant that she got four months in jail, I believe it was. And so she was two or three months into the sentence when Thanksgiving rolled around. And I just remember being at school and all the kids were really excited about their Thanksgivings. Like they were excited about what they were going to eat and about seeing their cousins or family that were coming in from out of state, and so on and so forth. And for my Thanksgiving, I had to go down to the jailhouse and sit on this little plastic stool on the opposite side of this plexiglass and see my mom and and talk to her. And it was just, it was really heartbreaking in a lot of ways to see her like that, to be like, oh, I can't just have a nice Thanksgiving like other people. You know, I have to sit in this jail with this drunk of a mother, whatever angry teenage thoughts I was having. And so there were situations like that which were challenging the absence of one or both of my parents during the holidays. And then even when people were not in jail, my father being in prison or my mom being in jail for something, even when they weren't incarcerated for some reason or another, my parents were still divorced. And so I often had to choose who I wanted to spend a holiday with. And there was often so much guilt. I would always feel bad when I was not with my mother because she clearly really loved me and loved spending time with me and it hurt her when I would leave her for my dad, which now I understand as an adult, like if you had a toxic narcissistic ex and they delighted in coming and taking your child from you and making it a horrible experience for you, like haha, she's with me now, it would be a terrible handoff, right? It would be a very uncomfortable situation and I'm sure it would ruin your holiday. (laughs) So now as an adult, I understand why it was so hard, but as a child, I didn't always understand why she was upset. I didn't always understand why my father seemed to delight in getting his fair share 
For example, I remember once when he proudly threw these papers down on the table and was like, see, I sued your mom for custody and I got it and you're only with her because I allow it, which is a strange thing to tell a child. (laughs) When I look back and I think of that, I'm like, what exactly was your motivation there, sir? What were you trying to convey to me exactly? I'm not even sure. But there was a lot of this competition between him and my mother from his end. Obviously, my mother was not trying to compete with him, but a lot of competition from his end, a lot of using me to hurt her. So the environment was just very toxic in a lot of ways, even as I had these good memories of, you know, putting up a tree or decorating or wrapping gifts or unwrapping gifts with with them. So it was a, a really mixed bag for me. And sometimes terrible things would just happen on the holidays. For example, the Thanksgiving where I was 16, it had to have been when I was 16. So the jail one must have been 14 or 15. And the 16, I would have just been 16 and been able to drive because my father came down for Thanksgiving, picked me up when I was 16. He had just bought this Corvette. He was showing it off. And he was like, oh, Corey can get to drive at home, et cetera, et cetera. And my mom told him that I was gay. That was the Thanksgiving that she dropped that bomb on him. From the way that she had told me that story, it was that he kept pressuring her uh, about him thinking I was having sex. Are you making sure that she's being safe? Are you having those conversations with her? And my mother sort of in an exasperated moment was like, she's sleeping with girls. Calm down. (laughs) Calm down. Like she is not going to get pregnant. And when he was told that and he didn't say anything to me right away, we got in the car. We're in the Corvette. He's driving at first. And then he starts telling me what she said and then just starts sobbing and At the time, I thought, oh my God, I have broken my father. I've completely crushed his heart. In hindsight, I realized this was an emotionally manipulated, uh, probably calculated move on his part to elicit a certain behavior and reaction from me. But at the time, I was like, oh my God, I have broken my dad by being gay. And so then he's like, well, you can drive the Corvette home and pulls over. And now I'm driving this Corvette and he's sleeping in the passenger seat with tear stains on his cheek. And I'm just driving this car it should have been a wonderful moment where it's like I'm 16 and I'm driving a cool car for the first time but it was such a terrible situation because of the the emotional current of the situation the the mental anguish that was embedded in this moment where I thought I had absolutely broken his heart I had never seen him cry before I had only heard him cry once before on the phone this was the first time I had seen him cry with my own eyes and so that's a kind of sense that I have about these holidays is that they were usually a combination of bad experiences, hyper-awareness of my family's brokenness, and then that on top of just the normal messaging that we get from the media about how to have a good Christmas, how to have a good Thanksgiving. Y'all, commercials are the worst, absolutely the worst. I don't know if you have ever seen these commercials where the families are happily putting things on the table and everyone's smiling and they're matching sweaters. The pressure is so high. I would just be like, wow, I don't know who has families like this, but uh, it is not me. (laughs) And so because of all this and because of my hyper awareness of my situation, I just developed a lot of unhealthy narratives. When I got a little bit older and I could start working, I started working fast food first. I worked at Burger King and then McDonald's for several years. And so when I started to have a little bit of money, I became a really competitive gift giver. I felt like if I couldn't give someone a really nice gift to spend more on them than they did on me, it would just highlight the sense of failure and wrongness that I had in me, that there was just something wrong with me, and I struggled with that for a really long time. So I would see toxicity in my own behaviors, my own thoughts around the holidays, even well into adulthood. And I think in its essence, this is because we know that the holidays touch on these primal feelings of love and belonging. We know that it can provoke a sense of perfectionism in us, and you could re-listen to my episode on perfectionism if you want to. And the holidays in general just have this quick pace, lots of work, high expectations, and all of it just together, it's just a perfect tornado of mental instability. (laughs) You know, just the holidays can really knock us off of our game, either because our history with the holidays are terrible, our families are complicated and toxic messes, or just cultural conditioning and expectations. Really, it's just the perfect storm of insanity, of cultivating insanity. 
So this is what I do to look after myself during the holidays to manage this mental cyclone that tends to blow through this time of year. And let me be clear, I still struggle with a lot of this, even though I have escaped my family of origin. I'm no longer talking to my dad. I don't have any connection with him. And my mother is dead, as you know, if you've listened to the Who Killed My Mother's podcast. So I don't spend time with my family of origin during the holidays. And now I have this loving family that I acquired through my marriage with Kim, but I still have to be diligent about my self-care during these times. Part of that is because my history with the holidays, my narratives with the holidays haven't changed, right? They're still in the back of my mind. They're still present. And then Kim's family, as wonderful as they are, they have their own quirks. Kim's family is their Filipino family. They're very loud. They're very boisterous. And so they can definitely trigger me, who is mostly used to staying at home in her pajamas, making things, stories, podcasts, and so on. I can still get overwhelmed in this situation, even though none of them are, you know, abusive or toxic and it's not the same problems. And Even if you're like, well, my family's not nuts, it's just hard to be around a lot of people in this sort of holiday environment. So even if that's true, still think about your care, still think about things you can do for yourself, even if your situation is not abusive, just like mine is no longer abusive, but I still need to look after my care during this difficult time. So no matter what the holidays bring you, no matter if you're alone and you're struggling with loneliness or you're with a whole bunch of people and you're struggling with overwhelm, here are some things to consider as you're working through your, your situation. Your holiday survival guide 101. First and foremost, be nice to yourself. Think about how you're speaking to yourself. Be aware of the narratives that you might be saying to yourself. Be very careful about the messaging you might be absorbing from television, from stories, from anywhere else where it's telling you what the holiday experience should be like. And try not to measure yourself against that. Be like, oh, well, I don't have that. So for example, there were many years where I didn't have my family and I was still single. So I was just by myself. Or maybe I would go to a friend's house for Thanksgiving. And sometimes I felt really lonely and isolated. And if that's where you are in your life right now, be mindful that there is no right way to do a holiday if you just happen to be alone for this holiday. Doesn't necessarily mean you'll always be alone or that being alone is a problem. And if you are alone for your holiday, put more emphasis on doing nice things for yourself. And again, this is a very competitive, commercial time of year. So I don't mean you have to run out and buy yourself a bunch of stuff and mask your feelings with presents. (laughs) You don't have to do that for yourself. But just think of like the perfect day, something that you would really enjoy. Maybe a hot bath, maybe a, a cup of tea, or maybe a hot cocoa, since that's more seasonal. Whatever it is. Find little things that make you feel loved and cared for and give those things to yourself on that day. Also, again, watching about what narratives you absorb. Don't say terrible things to yourself. Don't point out how you're, quote, not measuring up, what you need to do different. Also, try not to give in to the pressure to, like I did, compensate for your insecurities by overbuying things. It's not going to do you any favors to spend money you don't have in order to prove to the people around you that you love them or that you care for them and that you're not a worthless human being. You can find a way to convey those feelings and sentiment on whatever budget you have, even if it's completely zero dollars. Maybe the two of you, whoever you want to give a gift to, can go and do something together. Maybe like, make them a little coupon book, like I will do one errand for you. Whatever it is, you can convey your love and affection without doing it commercially if you're not in a position to do that right now. And then also giving yourself breaks, putting yourself in time out when you need it. So even now, even though I don't have my toxic parents in my environment anymore, I can still get very overwhelmed with all the Filipinos, very loud, (laughs) yelling over each other, having that classic family chaos over the holidays. I can get overwhelmed by that level of energy, volume, excess of interaction. And so sometimes I just give myself a break. I go into a different room. I read a book for a while. I take a nap. I decompress. I manage my sensory perception. I manage my environment however I can. Now, if you've got kids or someone who will chase you, (laughs) I only have a dog. I don't have children, but I do have a very needy dog who has to follow me around. And if I disappear, he will come looking for me. So even if you 
go into a bathroom, like who's going to follow you into the bathroom? Probably your children sticking their little hands under the door, right? (laughs) But keep the door locked. Give yourself that five, 10 minute break if you need to. And just tell everyone you like, you know what? I don't know. That pumpkin pie went right through me. Lie if you have to. Turn on the shower. Pretend like you needed to rinse yourself off for some random reasons. But give yourself little breaks if you need to, even if that means going into a bathroom because going into a room would still mean that you were accessible. If you go into another room and you think people would follow you, right, that's too much access. Generally, bathroom doors have locks. Lock yourself in. Give yourself a break. Or if it's you and a child and you're the only one and you're worried about caring for them and you can't wrangle them somehow and like a playpen or a whatever, there's not a safe place to put them, you can maybe plan to give yourself an hour at the end or the beginning of the day before they get up, before they start, in which you can dedicate that time to be loving and kind towards yourself, do something nice for yourself. But just managing your energy levels and completely rejecting any of this messaging that you're getting from the external world about what your holiday should be like, what you have to do to have a good holiday. Do your best to protect yourself from that messaging, from that energy. Be mindful of your own needs. In the holiday situation, in many of these holiday settings, whether it be work parties or gatherings or family get-togethers, there's a lot of emphasis on giving your energy to other people. You doing nice things for other people because it's like the season of giving, right? But I encourage you to remain mindful of what you need. Include yourself in the list of people you want to give something to this year. What nice thing are you going to do for yourself? And I don't mean you have to buy yourself something. You certainly can if you have the means. But what nice thing are you going to do for you? Where are you going to take yourself? What gift of time or attention or love can you give you? How can you make Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever you celebrate happy for you? You need to be on your own list. In fact, I argue that you need to be at the top of your list. Even though it is a season of giving to other people, do not neglect yourself and do not feel guilty if you have to take a time out in the middle of the hectic season, in the middle of the chaos, to tend to yourself. You are worthy of time and attention just as much as anybody else that you're going to see or interact with this time of year. So those are my suggestions. Those are my things I want you to keep in mind not to get caught up in the commercial frenzy or don't be hard on yourself if your situation is not ideal. Just be as loving and kind toward yourself as you can and be mindful of these narratives and messages that might be coming in and making you feel bad, making you feel like you're not enough, that there's something wrong with you, that you are lacking something in your life. Because it's not true. You are worthy and enough and whole just as you are. And you don't need a holiday or a gift or anything else to prove that. So just take good loving care of yourself this season and try not to let it stress you out. Try to do things that make you happy, that make you light up. I love looking at Christmas lights. I always have that on my list of things to do every year is I like to go look at lights. And I'll go by myself if I have to, but I will go stare at Christmas lights (laughs) because that's what makes me happy. Also, very cute little ornaments, especially if they're birds. That will make me happy. So if I got to buy myself a little bird ornament and I got to go stare at a large lit up tree in a park, I will be doing that whether or not I am alone or with friends or with family. I will do that for myself because I want to be just as kind and loving to myself this time of year as everyone is expected to be for everybody else. So that's my biggest tip is make sure that you are on your own list of people who deserve love and care and attention from you this year. And again, this episode was just about general themes and issues pertaining to the holidays. But because we're talking about families and cycles, really any emotion could be coming up for you this time of year. So if you need specific information about a specific emotion, please check out my earlier episodes of the show. I've talked about different issues like anger, perfectionism, fear, anxiety, grief, boundaries, and how to say no, all of which is very important during the holidays. And we also have those earlier episodes that include basic self-care practices if you want to look at any of the strategies that might help you take good care of yourself, practice good self-care during this time of year, like meditation and journaling, affirmations, all of that. 
So please go back and check out those episodes if you need more support on a specific issue that you're dealing with, okay? And that's all I've got for you right now. We are at the end of my Holiday Survival Guide 101. And not only do I wish you a wonderful holiday season, but I really hope that you find ways to take good care of yourself during this crazy time of year. And fear not, if you do start to lose your mind, I will be back next week with another episode of A Well-Cared-For Human. But until then, please take good care of you. This episode of A Well-Cared-For Human was written and produced by me, Corey Marie. The music was by Late Night Feeler and Esther Abrami. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider visiting my Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you get early ad-free access to the episodes, as well as a monthly patrons-only Q&A, bonus videos, and more. Not to mention that your Patreon support lets me know that you find value in the show and want it to continue. You can find me on Patreon by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash Corey Marie. If you can't support the show financially, that is okay. You can still subscribe to the show, leave a review of the show, and recommend the show to your friends, not just the neurotic ones. All of this helps so much. And as always, thank you for listening.